Good day and welcome to our first podcast of Liberty Alive. Today we will bring to, to you our own principal, Mr. Strassman, speaking about his take on this year. We will take a look at our winning football team and hear about this year's musical, Cinderella, from our own director and choreographer. In addition, we'll check out our National Art Honor Society and some of the projects they're working on. And we'll end today with a new segment seen on the tribute to seniors that make a difference every day. But first, a message from our sponsor. Hello, I'm a representative from Balfour, and I'm going to tell you a bit about our rings for you, Liberty High School. We have 51 styles for men and 23 styles for women. We have a gemstone for every birthstone with four different cuts each. We have 10 different types of metals and thousands of different sign designs, including a specially designed Liberty Indian just for you. Visit our website, www.balford.com, and put in Liberty High School for more information. Welcome back to Liberty Alive. Our school district changes year from year as students come and go, our principal Jack Shasman has seen this district through many changes and been in many positions. He has our own roving reporter, Phoenix Feldman, with Mr. Shasman. Hello, I'm here today with Mr. Shasman, and we'll be talking about Liberty School Center, the school system in general. Um, you've been a part of the school system for a long time. Uh, tell us about your history here. Okay, um, I began in 1995. I was hired as the elementary assistant principal and I spent three years as the assistant principal. I then became a co-principal at the elementary school and what that meant was there's two principals sharing responsibilities and I did that with Miss Finnegan who was the principal there for a long time who actually hired me and from there I became a co-principal at the middle school because I felt I could establish myself more there because I was never up there and eventually they, the district abandoned that idea and I became the middle school principal and opening opened up here at the high school. They asked me to apply. I said, sure, why not? I'll do that. I applied, I got that position and now I have the middle high school as you know, Phoenix. And I've been here for, this is my 20th year. I do have my 20 year pin that I'm very proud of. What is the most rewarding part of your job? Um, oh, and uh, that's, that's interesting. The first thing that comes to mind is actually graduation. Uh, when I, I first went to high school graduation as the principal, um, I was amazed. I had so much energy and it was just such a great day and a great way to uh, uh, recognize the students. So, and I was always trying to think, would it always be rewarding to me? And every, every uh, graduation is rewarding to me and I'm just happy for the kids and the families. It must be good to see the kids that you grew up with from elementary school who came along with and see them graduate now must be really yes. rewarding. Actually um, that is, I did see many kids through elementary, middle school and high school at the beginning and now through middle and high school so yeah that's rewarding. It's also rewarding to hire some of uh, uh, my former students who deserve the job. Each year has a different feeling different vibe. Mm -hmm. What sort of vibe do you get from this year? When we're able to share in the accomplishments of the student body and the students get behind it like the football team which you know you play uh, I think that really got us off to a fantastic start of the school year and we've had lots of recognitions whether um, Jenna Blank going to states or a football team going through the regional and now basketball team winning 3-0 um, and o right now and um, our music department had great concert season so this is a great time. The art department I have to say will be doing all their art shows in the spring so I'm hoping to be able to keep I'm hoping we not me are able to keep the uh, positive momentum going. A lot of Liberty Pride this year. And speaking of Liberty Pride, um, you've always shown a lot of Liberty Pride. And you always encourage those around you to show Liberty Pride. Uh, what are you most proud of in this district? I am proud of how the student body in general reacts to good situations and bad situations. Um, I feel that we are, that, this, that the student body is a very supportive of each other. And I know that most of our student body is just a really just a really great bunch of kids and 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 that's why it's easy to support them and they because you guys support each other 
As you meet with other district leaders, you have to compare yourself mentally with them. What good ideas have you heard from them that you would like to be implemented here in Liberty? Well, some of the things that I pay attention to is course offerings. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sorry, I, I do believe I'm a high school principal first. Um, and nothing against my middle school people and everything like that and the kids uh, and the importance of the middle school. But what I think about is what are we offering the kids to prepare them for high school and beyond. And I think that we need to continue to look at our course offerings, um, whether they're college, AP, or online. And I think that's the most recent thing that we're looking at. We're talking about our schedule here at the high school a great deal already because I think we need to do, we need to figure out, we have to offer as many courses as we can that the students want to take. We have to offer many after school activities and we have to create a schedule that better meets the needs of the students. And, and th those, those are some goals I have. So when my colleagues are talking about scheduling and what things, what courses are offered in their schools, I pay close attention to that. For example, when I got here 10, 10 or 11 years ago, at high school we had one or two college level classes, that's it. And uh, Ms. Argentati and I spent a lot of time looking at adding college classes, then we looked at adding AP classes. And now I'm very proud that students can earn 20 or more credits towards their college if they're going that way. Great, great, great thing. It's, it's, a, it's really getting a bang for your buck by taking our college classes because some of our students tell me they're, they're a second semester freshman sometimes when they enter. And I think that that's a great service that we could do to our kids. Um, and so I really pay attention to uh, what courses are being offered and, and how can we offer more. Like right now we're looking into um, our business program. We have a new business teacher here at the high school, so um, we're exploring having um, some college classes with business. And we have college classes in almost every core subject, um, and every subject is important. I think that's great. I think that's really giving the students a great, um, great opportunity. I hope that answered your question. Uh, it did. It did answer my question very well. Uh, if you're granted one wish for the district, what would it be? I wish that everybody in the in the district who comes through our our building gets a quality education that has some fun here. I think that's important. That has good memories from our school, and that everyone graduates because I think that's. That's so important these days that everyone graduates. We don't have to go to college, everyone, but we all, I want everyone to graduate. That's my focus. That's, that's what we have to be able to do. And we have to find the ways to help people to do that. Uh, other wishes is that we win the state championships in sports. <laughs> we get high in grades in our regions. That we're a school that the community can be proud of not only on the field, but, but so important in the classroom that people come to this area and say, I'm going to move to Liberty because they have a good school system. And that's, that's what, what should happen. I'm going to move into Liberty because Liberty has a good school system. And that's where I want my children to go to. And that's what I would like to see for Liberty. That is a wonderful dream. Thank you, Mr. Shasman. That's it. Good. I had no idea Mrs. Strassman was so thoroughly enmeshed in our school district. We are very lucky to have Mr. Strassman. He is right about the spirit we have here, especially with the winning football team this year. And here's a short piece prepared by one of the players and the team to help us salute them. As Liberty prepares for their annual musical, which this year is Cinderella, we were lucky enough to steal some of the director's time. 
Once again, here's our own roving reporter, Phoenix Feldman, with Mrs. McConnell. Hello, I'm Phoenix Feldman. I'm here with Mrs. McConnell, and we're going to be talking about this year's musical, Cinderella. Please tell us about this year's musical, Cinderella. Uh, we're performing Cinderella, the Broadway version, and this has added two additional songs. Um, some of you might know it as the Brandy version that was on TV in the 90s, um, but this has, there we're doing more with the stepsisters. There's more of a plot to kind of overthrow the king and queen because they want to take over. It's not just that they want to marry the prince, it's that they want to rule the kingdom. Um, so there's a kind of a comical twist in there. Um, but it is not the Disney version that we usually think of with the mice and the fairy godmother. Yes, there's a fairy godmother, but all of that Disney magic doesn't happen. Uh, they, yes, she gets turned into a princess in the ball, but the, the mice aren't existing in this version. Uh, so that's kind of a misconception that people have when we think of Cinderella is that they always think of the Disney version. So this will be a nice twist on, on the story that we have. Cool, cool. Um... Have you ever performed or been a part of this performance before? I have not been a part of Cinderella. I know that Mr. Hamblin has been in a production, not the Broadway version, but has been in a different production of Cinderella before. Has that affected your choice to do it this year? No. Um, I have not been in, I've only been in one of the productions that we've done. I was in The Wizard of Oz when I was in middle school. Other than that, they've all been new shows to me. Um, how do you select the musicals each year? Uh, we take a look at the students in, in Mr. Hamblin's chorus and how many guy singers we have and how many female singers we think we might have to audition, uh, how many dancers we have, if there's any dance shows, uh, sizes and characters. Uh, like when we chose Annie, we needed a little girl to play Annie, not a teenage girl. Uh, so we kind of take those things into consideration and pick a musical that is music accessible to the students as well as the pit players. How many hours do you assume will be put into this production? Um, calculated all together, um, it's probably about 150 hours for the students. Uh, they do two hours every day after school, plus some additional weekend. Um, that's just with me and Mr. Hamblin rehearsing, and then they go home and memorize lines and rehearse their music and rehearse dance moves. Um, and the final week, they are here about 40 hours for a week. That's a lot of time. Um, how many hours have you personally and Mr. Hamlin put in extra? Um, I would add about 75 to 100 hours on top of that. We start looking at musicals and talking and meeting with the administration and other people who are part of the show in October. Um, and we continue on all the way through. So we have meetings about the set, we have meetings about costumes, uh, we have to stay late uh, times to make sure that we are cutting music in appropriate places so that it's not too long or too short. We have to deal with programs, um, so it's, it's a lot of extra time on top of the additional rehearsal time. Wow. wow. Um, now, you have a brand new baby, too. Mm -hmm. Has that affected your time you have to commit to the performance? Um, we've definitely talked about different ways to schedule. Um, so the, the students will still need to be here, but maybe we're utilizing uh, Mr. Hamlin and myself in different ways this year. So like I do the staging and the lines and the dancing of the show and Mr. Hamlin does the music. So we kind of, we're trying to work out a schedule where it, maybe it's just a music night rather than an all around night um, and then just a stage night so that we can kind of work out times so that I'm still here and dedicated to the show but also at home with the baby. Cool, cool. Um, how is your personal life uh, led you to being a director? Um, I've grown up in music. I was in a children's theater when I was in sixth and seventh grade. I was again in The Wizard of Oz. Um, and I've been in the high school shows. I was on stage as well as in the pit band orchestra. Um, and then furthering that, uh, as a professional, I've been playing for local pit bands around in the area. And what is the most exciting part about this musical? Definitely seeing the growth of the students, uh, watching them read the first script is really funny because they don't quite understand the story, they don't have an idea of who their character is yet or what they want to do with their voice inflection or their body movements, and then to see their final performance, it's, it's a totally different person on stage. Anything you would like to add? That everyone should come see the show, we would like a full house, it makes the, the audience uh, the interaction with the audience and the stage members a little bit easier so that the stage members get really into the part. 
uh, we'd like a full packed house for all the shows, and our show date is April 15th and 16th. Okay, thank you. Being part of this production requires a lot more dedication and effort than I thought. I'll be sure to see this one. Me too. Remember those dates. April 15th and 16th at 7 p.m. here at Liberty High School. Speaking of things that are happening at Liberty High School, we have many active extracurricular clubs and teams. Science Olympiad recently had their annual regional competition held at Ulster County Community College where they finished 11th out of 27 teams. Their best events were air trajectory, electrical vehicle, and hydrogeology, where they placed 4th, 6th, and 7th, respectively. We have another organization at Liberty High School that is linking our best art students to our community through their abilities. Once again, here is Phoenix Feldman, our roving reporter, speaking to co-presidents of the National Art Honor Society, Kiri Milling and Jenna Blank. Hello, we are here today with National Art Honor Society co-presidents, Kiri Milling and Jenna Blank. What is National Art Honor Society? National Art Honor Society is a group of artists that come together to make something great for our community. National Art Honor Society is an organization created by artists and for artists. It is a way that we as artists can get our work into the, into the community while helping the community. With the four pillars of the organization being art, scholarship, character, and service, what do you feel you bring to this organization? Um, I feel I bring leadership to this organization in several different ways. Um, I feel that I help guide the group into different projects, help lead the projects, and overall I'm just here to be a part of everything. What are the requirements to get in? You have to have an 80 or above GPA and a 90 above in all of your art classes. How many years has this organization been established in Liberty? It's been established for two and a half years. What did you receive from this organization? Um, I, I definitely learned how to uh, be a leader here, um, which is not something I normally get to experience in my everyday life. So when I'm here, I get to do the things that I love, and I get to help others do the things that I love and help my community at the same time. What have you accomplished for the community? We've accomplished quite a lot since I've been in National Art Honor Society. We've um, we painted chairs for the library, so now kids have really fun chairs to sit in based on their favorite books. Uh, we put on an art show down at the Liberty Art Museum, which was so much fun to do and just really fun to, to have people just see everybody's artwork. Um, in the past, we we cleaned up the museum and um, we did a water project where we submitted photography into uh, the Catskill Art Society to raise uh, climate awareness. What are the group's goals for this year? The group's goals for this year is to finish the, mur the mural that we've been working on and um, to create different um, boxes that represent different forms of art like photography, painting, drawing. It's an amalgamation sculpture and it's going to be really cool. <laughs> What is your personal experience with National Honor Society? Every time I come here, I have a great time doing everything that we do. Because we come here and we turn on some music, we have pizza, and we paint, or we take pictures, or we do whatever we, we really want. Any important dates you would like to tell people to mark down on the calendar? Remember May 20th. That is our National Art, in Art Honor Society induction. This is where all the new members will be inducted, we'll have an art show, and it will be Liberty's first annual art walk. Um, can you explain what an art walk is? An art walk is 
where we take people and we walk them up and down the streets of Main Street where they can see all the art that we've we've uh, hung up and at each at each stop where there's artwork they get a stamp in their passport that they have and if they fill out their passport completely with all the stamps they get entered in a raffle and final message to the people um, I'd say if you're thinking about joining National Art Honor Society then you should because it's really a, uni a unique experience and it's nothing you'll really ever get to experience so I think that everyone should get a chance to join if you're eligible. Uh, just keep creating and if you feel led to to be in this group we'd love to have you. We're always open to new artistic creative minds and we need somebody to just carry on our legacy so and it's really fun. A lot of great people. You should join. Thank you Kiri. Thank you Jenna. It's amazing how our community and students can partner in such a worthwhile adventure and we wish them luck in changing the face of Main Street and thank them for their efforts there in our school community. What a great opportunity for students to have the ability to shine. And now something to look forward to. Second down at 10. Everything went blank. Everything. Uh, we used to say that all in, in football or in any sport, that that particular athlete got their bell rung. Every year, over 100,000 concussions occur in all levels of football. Liberty is a pretty tight-knit school community, and we can credit a lot of that to our seniors. In this, our first segment of Senior Moment, we are spotlighting one of our finest, Kevin Morgans. Hello, I'm Phoenix Feldman, and today we are here with Liberty's own Kevin Morgans. Kevin is an amazing athlete with many accomplishments under his belt. Not only is he an athlete, but he is also a well-known positive influence, mentor, and leader to many. Kevin, tell us a bit about your accomplishments and positions over the course of varsity sports. Uh, well, I've played on the varsity football team for four years, and I've also wrestled uh, two-time Section 9 champ, hopefully three in the next couple weeks and uh, also ran track well. You were also the only person on the football team who had experience going into sectionals because you were pulled up during your freshman year. Tell us a little about that. Oh, well, it gave me a little bit more experience. So it was gave me kind of a platform to lead from. And it was, you know, but every game is the same. You have been a great role model to countless amounts of people. What advice do you have to those that come after you? Uh, well, on the football team, it would just just be work hard, and you'll have your opportunities. And that, I mean, that really applies to everything. You just put the work in; opportunities will present themselves. Here today with Keegan Campbell, and he will be talking about Kevin Morgan's. How has he been an inspiration to you? This has been an inspiration to me. He's helped me through a, a lot, and he's helped me become who I am right now. I've grown more in the past three years knowing him than in the rest of my life. How are you able to balance such an involved home, academic, and athletic life? Uh, time management. What are your plans for after Liberty? Will you continue to pursue football or, and or wrestling? Uh, yes, I plan to go to SUNY Cortland and wrestle there. So what else can you take away from Liberty High School? Uh, it's a really tight, tight-knit community. All the teachers are always willing to help. You know, if you need to talk to somebody, you need to sit down, go in, guidance counselors, the whole staff. It's really, it's a really great community. It's a good place to go to school. What is your most memorable moment from Liberty High School? Uh, has to be when we won the Section 9 championship as a football team. Because it's been a goal for, I mean, really for the whole town for a long time everybody came together. You know, there was a huge, huge crowd there. Deed Stadium was just about full. And Final question, Kevin. Can you tag one other senior who you know is a positive influence? Tariq Johnson. All right. Thank you.
You heard it here, folks. Tariq Johnson, you have been tagged. I'm Brandon Powell. And I'm Austin Hendrickson. And this has been Liberty Alive.